Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Welcome students to the online lecture 7 of the introduction to computing course in the previous lecture we were discussing system unit in this lecture we are going to discuss some more related concepts and topics related to the system unit as you know the system unit is the most important component of a computer system so the working of system unit and its internal architecture and its internal working um, is very much essential uh, and the understanding of the component interaction is very much essential as far as uh, <coughs> like uh, understanding computer is concerned so with that I am going to discuss uh, our objectives so to, uh, in the previous uh, like lecture we discussed uh, these uh, objectives but we do not over having time so inshallah today we are going to discuss how uh, what is a bit and uh, describe how series of bit represent data so and we are also going to discuss how the processor execute that bits and bytes and why understanding of these bits and bytes are important so we are also going to explain uh, how program is transferred in and out of the memory we are going to differentiate among different uh, types of memory, describe the types of expansion slots and adapter cards and then we are going to discuss serial port, parallel port, a USB port and other ports and we are going to describe how buses contribute to the computer's processing speed, identify the components in mobile and mobile computers and in mobile devices. So all these components all these serial ports ram how data is processed is connected to the system unit so they you can say it somehow they are related to they are part of the system unit so understanding them is like and you are understanding a system unit so <coughs> um, uh, in the previous lecture we were discussing uh, what is a cpu central processing unit and why uh, what is the job of central processing unit uh, and how the processing power or how the performance of uh, and the computer is affected by the processor so we also discussed that uh, it is better to buy a good uh, computer having a core i7 uh, processor and uh, a, um, uh, is of 9th or 10th generation a minimum uh, you should have uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM so all of these components make your computer faster and the performance is increased and obviously it will decrease your waiting time whenever you are working on computer system so if for example you have bought a computer system but you do not like your processor or you want to upgrade your processor then there are different options the first is chip for chip upgrade and what you do in this uh, upgrade you uh, like um, replace your old chip and uh, you install a new chip so if for example old chip is core i3 you can like use the core i7 chip and the second one is piggyback upgrade and then uh, what it does that you stack or you install new chip on top of the old one so old one also works and the new chip the new process chip also work and then we have a daughter board upgrade where the chip is on adapter card so you use a separate adapter card that is plugged into the motherboard so you have a separate <coughs> mother card and in, uh, on in that like uh, adapter card you install the processor uh, it's like like you can say that your uh, gpu graphics processing unit is also a kind of a processor and your modem your network card they are like a type of processor though they are small processing unit so they enhance the processing speed of a computer so the, the central processing unit job is to execute instruction and to give instruction and then to to coordinate the different components of your computer i mean it establishes coordination among different components of your computer system so that is the job of the central processing unit but there are many other processors that work together that with the central processing unit in order to uh, carry out the work for example gpu may be like busy in uh, displaying or in processing the data that is related to graphics or that is related to image processing um, so and GPU may be busy in uh, like processing data and displaying on the screen so uh, it enhances the processing speed because a lot of 
uh, other small processes are also working along with the central processing unit and these uh, components make the processing speed of a computer uh, like it enhances it it increases it so the processing unit if you open uh, like the casing or the system unit you will see another important component called the heat sink or the heat pipes so this is like uh, the heat sink you have a fan here and um, it like uh, uh, absorb the heat from the processor so it keeps a, a consistent temperature so that the uh, uh, like um, your processor may not melt down or may not malfunction or it may not like destroys itself because uh, uh, a lot of heat a lot of temperature a high temperature can cause a problem so a heat sink is a component with fins that cools the processor so you have a fan and you have heat sinks with fins so it cools down or it absorb the temperature of the processor and we also have a uh, heat pipes uh, heat pipes are smaller devices for notebook computers just as heat sinks are there for the uh, desktop computer system so you can see these these white area here these white area these are all heat sinks and on top of that we have we also have heat sink fans so heat sinks are absorbing getting temperature from the processor whereas the fan further is cooling down the uh, heat sink so it is just like uh, this fan is just like a fan in your cars in your auto vehicles so the purpose is to cool down the um, uh, vehicle engine so uh, the same purpose is uh, also here so uh, there is another concept related to the system unit which is called uh, parallel processing um, it is also called simultaneous processing or concurrent processing so why it is important because in a single time duration we are doing multiple job how because we are using multiple processor so in this scenario we have processor 1 processor 2 processor 3 processor 4 and we also have a control processor so control processor gets data from the input device or from the hard disk or from the modem and then here uh, through the operating system instruction it uh, segments or it divides that job into four uh, equal jobs and then it gives to the individual processor so now the these four processors are working parallel on the same task which is divided into sub task and then uh, after uh, completing their task the result is combined by the control processor so using multiple processors simultaneously to execute uh, to execute a program faster is called parallel processing requires special software to divide problem and bring result together so this special software is there inside is a part of the operating system so nowadays uh, core i7 core i3 core i5 all these computers have multiple processors so that is why the speed of computer is increasing day by day so your smartphone also if you say octa core octa core means that it has eight core eight processor core mean core processor and quad core mean it has four processor or four core similarly <coughs> in core i7 there are different architecture there are different cores processors working together and these all uh, multiple processor enhances the speed of your computer system so now uh, the other thing is that uh, how the computer represent data and how the computer uh, data is processed in, inside the system unit or how the computer data is processed inside uh, uh, how the processor process the data so for us uh, we like communicate with the computer in a high level language or in english language we have alphabets numbers special keys arrow keys and control keys so all these are like we understand them but for a computer it recognizes only two digits and that are called one and zero so we can say that uh, we, it can also be represented using electronic charge like uh, a specific area is charge or it is not charge um, so normally uh, this one and zero are called binary digits so binary means we have two digit and it is called one digit is called a bit so computer recognize only two discrete states on or off one or zero using a binary system to recognize two states so it uses a binary system to recognize two states so most of computers are in fact digital computers so use number system with two unique digits zero and one called bits short for the 
binary digits so only these two numbers are understood by a computer system so the question is how computer system represent different type of data so it represents those different type of data by combination of 1 and 0 so if you combine 1 and 0 1 and 0 if you make different patterns so you can represent any type of data that is in english language or urdu language or in some high level language so then what is a byte so if when you uh, group 8 bits together this is called a byte so 8 bits grouped together as a unit is called a byte provides enough different combination of 0 and 1 so a byte provides enough different combination of 0 and 1 to represent 2 raised to the power 256 individual characters so uh, this pattern 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 is representing for example uh, a and this is representing 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 is representing b so you can through this uh, uh, combination through these different patterns you can uh, like represent numbers uppercase and lowercase letters so how many um, different patterns you can have if you have two bits so it's like 2 raised to the power 8 so whatever is 2 raised to the power 8 that these are the different combination that you can so in fact 2 raised to the power 2, 8 is uh, like 256 individual uh, 256 in, um, uh, like different patterns so uh, you can represent then uh, from those patterns you can represent numbers uppercase and lowercase letter punctuation marks etc so there are uh, three popular coding system used to represent data one is ascii american standard code for information interchange and um, then uh, we have uh, e b c d i c in extended binary coded decimal interchange code and then we have a unicode coding scheme capable of representing all languages of the world so these are three popular coding scheme you know that are used to represent data so for example 0 0 1 1 0 0 i mean this represents 0 and in um, uh, e b c d i c it is represented as 1 1 1 0 0 0 so uh, these different patterns represent 0 1 2 and 3 so remember that these are the three popular coding system used to represent data inside of a computer system so now the question is how is a letter converted to binary form and back to uh, a letter so um, this is a keyboard in step one the user presses the capital letter d shift plus d on the keyboard like uh, you uh, presses the d the capital d and what happens electronic signal for the capital d is sent to the system unit so electronic signal electronic pattern could be like one zero one zero one whatever so do not care about it so the signal for capital d is converted to its ascii binary code which is as i told you zero one zero 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 one zero zero and is stored inside memory for processing so after processing the i mean the computer recognizes this ascii pattern it knows what does it mean because already we have programmed the computer system the processor processes it and it knows that 0100100 represent the letter d so after processing the binary code for the capital d is converted to an image so the d is then converted to an image and is displayed on the output device so this is how every uh, capital letter every number every high level language letter or digits or sentence or paragraph is converted into binary language and computer understand that binary language and then it is converted back into the uh, digit digital form or alphabetical form or numerical form or whatever form you are using so every data is converted into a binary form because computer only understand the binary language so now the question is what is a memory if somebody asks you what is a memory so like memory normally represent the random access memory so there are different types of memory you can have like for example consist of one or more chips on the motherboard or on or other circuit board so you have small chips temporary chips that are used to hold data temporarily but remember they are expensive they are fast they are there to enhance the processing speed of a computer system each byte store a unique location called an address similar to address on a passenger train so for example you have a seat in a passenger train so that is an address 
तो सिमिलरली ईच बाइट स्टोर इन अ यूनिक लोकेशन कॉल एन एड्रेस सो एवरी मेमोरी लोकेशन हैज एन एड्रेस सिमिलर टू द एड्रेस ऑन द पैसेंजर ट्रेन सो कीप दिस थिंग इन माइंड सो आई एम गोइंग टू चेक द टाइम ओके सो यू आर डिस्कसिंग मेमरी so just as as uh, passenger uh, train has addresses seat addresses so we also have a memory location and every memory location has a unique address so memory stores basically uh, three uh, categories of uh, uh, items the more one is operating system and the other system software so it store um, the part of operating system that is currently executing and other system software it can store application program that are for you people that you people run for example games or multimedia software or web browsers so anything and it also stores the data and the resulting information <coughs> so now, now the question is how the memory is measured so measure a uh, memory can be measured <coughs> in the form of kilobyte in the form of megabyte so normally 1 kilobyte represented by kb or k is 1000 byte and 1 megabyte represented by one um, uh, like mb is 1000 kilobyte or 1 million byte and one gigabyte represented as gb is 1000 megabyte or 1 billion byte and one terabyte represented by tb is uh, like 1000 gigabyte or 1 trillion byte and then we have picobyte so i i recommend you people to buy a computer having at least 1 terabyte of uh, hard disk and that also should be uh ssd solid state drive so and i also recommend student to buy uh, a ram of minimum 8 gigabyte so these are very essential thing otherwise your computer will cause many problem and it will hang and you will be in waiting state so that is very frustrating now the question is what is the random access memory remember all these components of are the part of a computer system so random access memory is a memory it is located close to the cpu it is expensive faster than the hard disk it is installed there in order to enhance or increase or support the processor in processing data so memory chip that can be read from and written to by the processor so usually processor use it the ram is also called main memory or memory or primary storage most ram is volatile what does it mean it is it is lost when computer power is turned off so data inside ram is lost when the computer is turned off you might be then thinking so then where does the data go the data is permanently stored on the hard disk so you do not have to worry about that your data is lost the more a ram computer has the faster it responds so remember always buy a computer having a good ram so this is a ram but if you buy more ram so uh, uh, the computer will uh, respond faster for example you are playing a game and there's a very heavy game so it uh, if you have a larger uh, uh, ram so computer will respond fast and you will enjoy playing that game so how do program instruction transfer in and out of the ram so in step number 1 when you start the computer certain operating system file remember certain operating system files load into the ram from the hard disk so not all the operating system is loaded from the hard disk into the ram the operating system displays the user interface on the screen for example here you go you have this hard disk when the computer start operating system instruction Uh, certain operating system instruction are loaded into the uh, ram and then processor displays their instruction so you are watching or you are viewing your uh, main window screen so when you start a web browser the program instruction loaded uh, the program instruction load into the ram for from the hard disk so whenever you click on any application software such as web browser so web browser is loaded into the ram and then it is displayed on the monitor the web browser window is displayed on the screen in step number 3 when you start word processing program the program instruction load into the ram from the hard disk the word processor program along with the web browser and certain operating system instruction are in ram so now in this scenario we have operating system uh, 
uh, certain operating system files, web browser instructions and word processor program instruction. All these are inside the RAM. So if you want to run more program, uh, if you have a larger RAM, so then um, uh, your computer will execute them concurrently and you will be not in a waiting state or you are not going to, your computer will not hang. So this means that at the same time you are running multiple program that is this is because of multi-processing and also because of a larger RAM when you quit a program such as web browser its program instruction are removed from the RAM so whenever you close a program the program instruction are uh, like removed from the RAM the web browser is no longer displayed on the screen okay so web browser program instruction are removed from the RAM web browser window is no longer displayed on the on the, uh, the desktop so um, now um, you have noticed that you can run multiple program in your computer system uh, and these program can run concurrently uh, if you have a good RAM for example if you have MIMO 8 gigabyte RAM so you can run 10 to 15 program easily uh, efficiently on your computer system so with that I'm going to stop here because we are running out of time uh, I hope that uh, this lecture was uh, very uh, useful for you people if you have any query question then you can post it on the Google group uh, inshallah I'll see you in the next class so till then take care and